Hi there, my name is Matt Godbolt and I'm going to be talking about Zindex. This is a talk I gave at a Chicago open source open mic a few years ago and um, this is a story of scratching my own itch. It was originally a lightning talk so it was meant to last five minutes. I'm hoping to stick to around that so this is a shorter video. So um, I can be contacted on Twitter, uh, my handle is at Matt Godbolt or you can look in the, the notes below. So I had a problem. I have more than 5,000 read-only archived JSON log files on an NFS drive. So there's an automatic process at my company and some of the log files that we generate, huge, great big log files that are JSON, one line per JSON record, are stored on an NFS server and then they are archived and they are gzipped. And that's a process that I don't have access to and we don't want to change it. Lots of things will depend upon it. Um, but from time to time, I need to find particular entries in those JSON log files by the unique ID or a unique ID that's inside them. So the current solution to that would be to use something like ZGREP. ZGREP is an awesome tool and it's part of our everyday um, sort of hacking around looking for things that have in compressed files. So, but essentially it boils down to a ZCAT, that is a decompression to standard out pipe through GREP. And so here I know that my event ID, the thing I want to look for is actually at the beginning of the line and I'm going to kind of abuse the fact that uh, my JSON documents will have a regular form and I'm going to look for a particular event ID by this kind of regular expression. And that's great. So I get my audit log and I Z grep through it. And uh, the only problem here is it takes 14 seconds to get one of these, get through one of these monster log files. And that's because Again, uh, Zcat is not clever. It's having to uh, decompress and output every single byte of the file and then pass it through grep. And grep is super quick and Zcat is super quick, but these are big files and they're being read off of NFS. So ideally we'd like to index the file in some kind of way so that we could like, you know, find a particular record. It's always the event ID that I want to search by. So why don't I have an index somewhere that says, well, if you want to look for 63181572, then look here. Well, the problem with that is you can't seek inside a gzipped file. That's because it's a compressed blob of data and you just don't know how to get there. So let's have a look inside a gzipped file and see how true that really is. So a gzipped file is a sequence of blocks. Each block can be compressed or uncompressed. Um, there are a variety of different ways that it can be compressed as well. It could just be um, LZ77 directly or it could be Huffman encoded and the Huffman trees can be um, um, placed in the file as well or, or or prearranged um, various different settings but ultimately there are lots of sequences of blocks that are we can use as sort of our edges and um, I it just so happens that the, the the standard compression system emits blocks fairly regularly so that it can switch between different modes maybe the you know files have um, start off with one type of data and then later on become a different type of data that would compress better with a different uh, Huffman tree so it makes sense to continually generate blocks and have slightly different settings for each block as, as you're going through the file. So um, let's sort of talk about what an LZ77 decoder is within that context. Um, so the Huffman tree just makes it easier to encode these um, uh, uh, the bytes that are going to be in a block. So we can essentially ignore that and just assume that um, the Huffman process emits symbols. And a symbol can be one of many things. It could be either a literal byte, so literally like the letter A or 255, um, or it can be a back reference, that is a reference to something that has already been decompressed and a length to say, hey, go back five, um, or rather go back three and copy five bytes. Um, the, the distance is limited to only being 32K back. So that allows us to sort of refer back to something and say, hey, now in this file, it's the same as something we've already seen. So just copy it. And then there's another symbol, which is the like, end of block marker, which says that we've decoded one of these blocks and we're going to move on to a new block. So let's give you a quick example of what a, a block might look like. Here is uh, my example text, which is nom nom nom, gzip files, and lots of exclamation marks. And first thing we're gonna say is it's gonna be a marker that says this is a compressed block. And in this instance, when there's no Huffman stuff going on. Um, then we're gonna have five literal bytes, M-O-N-O-M -O space N. And now, cleverly, the encoder will notice that the O-M space N could be used a few more times. So we're gonna go, and copy seven bytes from four bytes back. And you can see here that we will now get nom nom nom. Now if the encoding of the instruction to copy seven distance four is much much shorter than actually just spitting out the literal bytes om space nom space then we've saved some, some um, um, space. 
Uh, then the word gzip files comes out with a single exclamation mark, and now we're going to copy that one exclamation mark multiple times to get our lots of exclamation marks. And again, this should be shorter than um, the, uh, the equivalent literal bytes. And the important thing here is that the referring back can actually refer to previous blocks, prior blocks in the file, not just the ones that are inside this block. So we can get compression between blocks too. So how can we do seeking? If we want to be able to seek within a gzip file, well, we could actually run through a gzip file looking at the blocks that have been created, the compressed block one, compressed block two, compressed block three here, which obviously correspond to the uncompressed blocks at the top here, the uh, zero to 45632 and then 45632 to 88775. And I've kind of made up some numbers here that show me roughly how compressed they could be. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to store a, for every offset in the uncompressed file, I'm going to store where the com equivalent compressed block starts, and then I'm going to store a little bit of context. You know that we can refer back up to 32k backwards. Well, I'm going to store the 32k leading up to the beginning of that block, and I'm going to call that context. So here you can see that the context for the first book, green block, the first one we can seek to, um, is, and I've put a, an ellipsis there, dot, 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 that's the end of the word uncompressed space one, as that's what potentially, as we're decompressing uncompressed two, we may need to refer back to bytes that came in uncompressed one. So I'm gonna store in a table the compressed offset, which maps to a particular map, uh, place in the gzipped file, and in a bit of context. Now that context is obviously 32K, which is a shame because that's quite big. And in this particular example, you can see that to get to, for example, um, the uncompressed block two, um, there's actually 45k in the way, so storing 32k there seems like a, a bit of a, uh, a shame. But of course we can compress that context too using, well, the gzip library, why not? So it turns out not to be such a big deal, um, and in reality these blocks come much further, especially in the kind of data that I'm talking about. So let's talk about what Zindex is. So Zindex is an indexing program that runs through a compressed file, decompresses it, finds every single line in that file, and for each line it will index it based on a user parameter. It checkpoints the gzip state every few megabytes. So I don't actually do every single block, only every few megabytes. Decompressing is so quick, relatively speaking, that as long as you can skip a long way into a file, you don't have to be able to go seek to every single block, compressed block within that file. And then each of those checkpoints has to store, as I said, 32K, which of course can be compressed like I described. And then ZQ is a tool which takes that index that's been built, allows us to query the index based on an input parameter, find out which line it corresponds to, then find the file offset of that line, then find the checkpoint nearest to that line, the, the, the earliest checkpoint before it, rather the latest checkpoint before that spot, then initialize the gzip library with the 32K of context that we'll also read, fast forward, and to, to that point in the file, so we can jump a long way in, and then we need to start decompressing, and then we do need to throw bytes away until we get to the right spot, but hopefully there hasn't been too much. You only had a, a megabyte or two to seek through, and we're talking about these logs which are like tens of gigabytes, so this is a huge, huge win. So let's take a quick example of how we would build an index. We'd use this index command. Um, in this instance, there are multiple ways of, um, of uh, building an index, but I'm gonna use a regular expression and I'm cutting out a regular expression which finds the beginning of the line and looks for that quote event ID of my um, my JSON. And then the parens inside the regex tell me which part of it is important, which part of that regular expression is the actual key that I want to index on. So I'm grabbing the zero to nine plus um, numeric literal that will be at that point. And then I'm telling this index that this is a unique index as I happen to know my event ID is unique. It's also numeric. Um, so the underlying database implementation I'm using can take that and, and optimize the, the database it's going to be generating. And talking of that database, it's going to use SQLite, which is an awesome, awesome little library for um, storing this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to create a SQLite index file. And for example here, you know, taking a 1.6 gig of compressed input, which corresponds to roughly 20 or 30 gigabytes of uncompressed input, it will generate an index file that's around 63 meg takes 90 seconds to run through it that one time, which is unfortunate, but that's how it goes. But now we can query it. And so here we are querying ZQ, using ZQ, ZQ um, passing it the 6318.1572 example I gave, 
And now instead of taking 14 seconds to run through the entire file, it takes 0.03 seconds, which is 47,000% faster than ZGrep. That's a completely unfair example, of course, but then, you know, that's what benchmarks are all about. So if you have any questions on this, um, please feel free to email me or tweet me or um, post on issues on the GitHub tracker, which is linked here, and I will put in the notes. Uh, I hope that is an interesting talk for you.